my face. Hey guys! All right, people, I'm Garrett. This is Making Movies, and it is 2020. It feels good to be back. I know I was gone for a little bit. I wasn't not doing anything. We actually have been working on a large video series that we are doing with light panels. Here's a little preview of that. That's gonna be coming out later. I'll keep you guys updated on that, but that's where I've been. So I, I have been doing things and I'm really, really excited to show you what that all looks like. But today, we're not talking about lights. We're talking about lenses, specifically this lens. This is the Siri 50 millimeter anamorphic lens. Uh, it is a 133 anamorphic. We'll get into all of the technical stuff about that. But what's interesting about this is it is a true manual anamorphic lens for under or just around $700 American. Pretty incredible because the nearest competitor is just over $1,000 and from there it gets massively more expensive into the tens of thousands of dollars. I have played with this lens for a while. I have some thoughts, uh, but before we kind of get into the specifics of what I think about this anamorphic lens, we should talk a little bit about what this means. 50 millimeter, 133 anamorphic, all of that. This, put it over there for now, is a crop sensor lens. It is an APS-C lens, meaning that it will not work for full frame cameras, which is probably why they put it on the mounts that they put it on. You can buy this lens in one of three mounts, which is the Sony E mount, the Fuji X mount, or Micro Four Thirds for Panasonic, some of the Blackmagic stuff, Olympus, that kind of thing. I'm not going to break down the science behind lens equivalents. It's a lot of math, a lot of numbers, it doesn't matter, but what you need to know is that on any lens, this lens included, the number that you see here is not necessarily the number that you're actually getting. The reason is because the sensor size that you have versus the sensor size that that's measured off of, plus the camera that you're using, all dictates exactly what that unit of measurement truly is. You can look that up on your own, Google it, get lost, it's a hellish nightmare, enjoy. What you need to know is that this lens, if you are using it on an APS-C camera or an APS-C sensor. So Sony E-mount, Fuji X-mount, it's gonna be about a 56 millimeter lens, true as far as what it actually is going to be. Uh, and if you are on a micro four thirds camera, some of the Blackmagic stuff, some of the uh, Panasonic stuff, like what I'm rocking, it's gonna come in at about a 75 millimeter lens. That said, I'm glad that they went with a normal lens for their first prime because with wides uh, or, or something that's super telephoto, they become much more specified in their use case. A normal lens or just outside of normal uh, is a pretty good place to start with a prime. That's lens equivalence. The other thing is of course, the amount of squeeze, what this lens is actually giving you. Anamorphic is measured in two different lens types. There are 2X anamorphic lenses and 133X anamorphic lenses. The basic brass tacks is that a 2X anamorphic is going to literally double the horizontal plane. This is for cameras that shoot in open gate or 4.3 where they utilize the entirety of the sensor and then they can duplicate that horizontal plane giving them that nice wide aspect ratio. A 133 lens, which is what this guy is, is for cameras that shoot 16.9 and don't necessarily have the option for a full open gate 4.3. When shooting in 16.9, if we were to double that, you would get this insanely wide aspect ratio like this. This is what happens when you shoot a 2X anamorphic on 16.9. A 133 on a 16.9 sensor is gonna give you about the same aspect ratio in final that a 2X on a 4.3 or open gate sensor would. When it comes to anamorphic, there are some lens characteristics, things that uh, are recognizably anamorphic, namely uh, the bokeh being one of them. Instead of having spherical bokeh or where things are out of focus, you have these nice little circles in the back. Because we are de-squeezing an image, it's going to take those from being circles to being ellipses. The other main characteristic is because the lens front is not spherical but cylindrical, uh, you get these really cool lens flares that come across it. 
If you don't want those lens flares, a uh, matte box or a lens hood, something that's going to prevent light from kind of hitting the corners of this lens is going to block all of that out for you and give you kind of a more traditional look without all of that flaring. Those are all principles of anamorphic lenses or characteristics of anamorphic lenses that people love. This lens is surprisingly hefty. Uh, in the hand. It is a full manual lens, so there are no electronic components to it. Towards the front of the lens, you have your focus ring, and then underneath that, you have your aperture ring. This boasts at being a 1.8 f-stop lens. We'll talk about that in a bit, but it is a really robust and hefty lens, and when you look at this, see the front of that? Look at that. That is a beautiful looking lens and there's really, really good tension uh, in this. It doesn't feel like it's really cheaply made. It feels very, very good in the hand. This lens claims to be F 1.8. I treat this in the same way that I treat the Rokinon DS Cine lenses, where wide open, you're pretty soft. In my opinion, kind of unusably soft, uh, unless you're going for kind of like this smeary, dreamy kind of sequence. It allows a good amount of light in, but at the expense of the overall image. At 2.8, it's a bit better. This is kind of where I would start to say it's usably soft. This lens really shines in the four to five, six range, and then of course beyond. But at 4.0, this thing is tack sharp. It does exactly what it says it's gonna do, uh, and it gives you a really, really beautiful and highly stylized image. But uh, 1.8, I, I, I don't think that this is something that you could use at 1.8 in the same way that I don't think you could use a Rokinon at 1.8, but that doesn't make either of those lenses bad. I think that this is still an incredible lens at the price tag. You just have to know the limitations. If you want an anamorphic lens that's gonna be tack sharp at 1.8, spend tens of thousands of dollars. Enjoy that. I honestly don't shoot many sequences much more shallow than four, maybe three, six, but four, four to five, six in that range is about where I'm normally living with these lenses unless I'm shooting kind of like really, really wide establishing shots. That's another misconception when searching for the cinematic look is something that's extremely shallow. Unless you absolutely hate your focus puller, most feature films have a fairly decent throw in their focus unless they're there's a stylistic reason why we need to have a, a razor thin focal plane. De-squeezing footage in uh, Premiere, which is what I edit in, is super easy. It's a couple of clicks and I then take this squeezed looking image and I can turn it into natively what the final output should look like. The lens has a 67 millimeter lens front to it. I think we've talked about it before in this channel, but I always recommend getting really, really large filters for your lenses and then get step down rings. That way I don't have to buy different filters for different lenses, I can use the one filter filter that I have, put it on any lens that I want. So when buying filters, that's something to consider is that this is a 67 millimeter front as opposed to 72, 77, or 82, which are kind of more uh, standard. If you're chasing the anamorphic look, this is it. This is gonna give you everything that you are looking for in an anamorphic lens uh, at a price that is more affordable than it ever has been. That wraps it up for me as far as this anamorphic lens goes. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and give the video a like. If you wanna see more stuff like this, hit subscribe and that little bell notification icon. That way you know when I upload videos. And as always, I'll see you in the next episode.